Hi everyone, so this would be our first video in the series for business analytics course and this video is not going to be anything, you know, discussion about week one, technical details or any kind of explanation. In this video, I will be just highlighting what course content we would be covering, what methodology you should follow so that, you know, your learning process is streamlined because um, I think a lot of students have problem in the, you know, learning process because a uh, lot of answer keys from the past year have errors which you won't be able to see if you are only referring the past year question papers so one thing is that and then how you can score a good marks i can promise you that if you follow this series um a little understanding and some practice of pyqs can definitely guarantee you a grade but if you also attend live sessions by the course instructors and the ta sessions probably asit and shaibalni would be taking that thing this term so that would be really helpful for you all and a general tip before any quiz or in term exam definitely make sure you have watched all the live session for that term put it on 2x put it on 3x whatever is your you know capacity but make sure you have at least watched the content once because sometimes they would give some hint that you know this kind of question would be very important so before your quiz one quiz two or in term make sure you definitely watch the lectures uh, from live session and see what they are trying to emphasize on don't uh, you know uh, there would be some indirect hints so definitely try to look up to that and now we would be seeing you know uh, how to get good marks in the business analytics so as you can see uh, this is the course uh, business analytics and this is the course code ms2002 so which basically means that this is a course from managerial sciences this is not a mathematics or machine learning related course you can check courses like mlf mlt the course code the first two letters would be different now why i'm saying this because in this course you don't need uh, anything apart from plus minus division multiplication and a little bit of derivative at only one week the most of the important aspect of this subject would be basically interpretation of these models you are not going to build models, uh, you know, machine learning models or any kind of models, mathematical or statistical. Instead, you will be understanding why we use these methods, when we use these methods, how to know is this method correct or not? Are we using correct methodology? Is our result going to be actually correct or not? So these all are the things which we will be studying in business analytics. I think uh, if you are from mathematics or economics background, uh, every course uh, in mathematics and economics has a subject known as econometrics. So you can think of it like that, uh, not ideally entirely econometrics, but yes, some, the middle week is definitely, you know, considerable like that. So this is a grading document. Uh, please make sure you have look on this. Most important part is that you don't have regular weekly graded assignments. So you, you won't be seeing uh, grade assignments week by week. Instead, you will be having three assignments and out of which they will be taking out best of two. Make sure you submit all three because this is very important as people lose marks here. So three uh, assignments would be there, 20, 20 marks each. Make sure you submit all three and uh, they will be taking, you know, best two out of these three. So anyway, if you get, you know, uh, 20, 20 in any two, first two, last two, you get 40 marks in that part. Quiz, both quiz will carry 20% marks. I think a lot of people uh, have this understanding that quiz only carry 20% marks. So I will just study end term 40 marks, 40 marks from the assignments and I will be you know good to go. But one thing which they miss on is this criteria, which is your eligibility and you know, uh, for final term and course grade. So if you do not pass on this criteria, which is basically the weighted average like this, 0.7 of your maximum and 0.3 of your minimum quiz score, this should be greater than 7 by 20 or you can say 35 percent so if you don't get this thing uh i'm sorry to say but you won't be able to write your interim exam so to write your interim exam this is very much needed and if you won't be passing you can go ahead and check the discourse this would be a big problem for you because a lot of people miss by one marks 0.5 marks it's up to the you know course team if they are kind enough they sometimes do allow people on border but if you are let's say getting 5 out of 20, 4 out of 20, that's a very poor performance and they won't be letting you pass. So you won't be able to write your end term exam and therefore you will be failing the course. And then you will be getting a U grade, which means you need to repeat the 
entire course so make sure please you attend your quiz uh, with lot of attention even if you you know do quiz 1 in the best manner a very lit, uh, less course quiz 1 has course from uh, you know week 1 to 5 uh, 4 so if you do this only that's also enough uh, do first four weeks uh, in a rigorous manner so that you can clear your quiz eligibility criteria that is one thing another thing is to get your final course grade uh, even if you open this course right now you will see lot of people saying that i got 60 out of 100 but still i am being failed yes you would be failed if you are not meeting this criteria you need to write your entam exam as well as you need to you know get 10 out of 40 one important thing here is that entam exam is also score uh, you know made for 45 marks so you have a scope for scoring some extra marks let's say you score you know 42 by 45 so you will be getting 40 out of 40 so this is how they cap so you have some option to do something extra or maybe if you are not comfortable in any week you can leave that part uh, but i think the course in general is not that tough if you will follow these methodologies definitely you will be scoring an a and as i said for s you need to put in more efforts go to the live sessions try to practice with the tas and uh, definitely asit and chabalni are very good people i have worked with chabalni myself and uh, i am very much confident of them as well so you know try to attend the ta sessions try to attend the live sessions you would be seeing the results yourself if you cannot try to at least watch the lecture recordings on 2x speed the bare minimum which i can suggest is but do watch them if you cannot you know pause and do the question at least you know watch in one go like a video so this is one thing these assignments are very easy there is no scope that you can lose marks so please get 40 out of 40 from here i think first assignment is something where students generally lose one question i am not going to uh, it's uh, explain what question what not so i won't be discussing anything related to assignments here i would be only discussing questions related to the theory part which is your quiz 1 and quiz 2 and end up so this is what you have in your grading doc again highlighting quiz criteria is very much important as well as this end up criteria if you will not meet this thing you will be failed and you will have to repeat the entire course again entire course so make sure you do that now how you can do your studies in a more streamlined manner so because i did this tship for four terms i think uh, lot of students have been asking things again and again so i made this website you can see this thing here and uh, you know for this uh this is one screenshot and uh, i have compiled all the corrections uh, shaivalni also helped me here i also did few revision sessions with different houses uh, nilgiri house nafada house so you know go to this website you will see all the ta session recordings all the materials which we were using from january 2024 up till uh, january 2025 term so all the four term recordings and the material for the ta session is there all the course corrections which happened in the end term quiz 1 quiz 2 are also here so if you are you know doing any practice let's say i am going for quiz 1 so i will go to this link which is past year question paper i will open the let's say january 2024 question paper i will go in this link i will search for january 2024 quiz 1 i will open that link i will try to solve the pdfs i will try to you know solve the questions here and there or maybe you can use quiz practice website that is also good one and then a lot of answers you might be thinking are given wrong yes there is chance that few answers would be wrong so just click on this link this will redirect you to this course so on this course course team has given the final correct answer so make sure you open these links whenever you are practicing i would suggest go to quiz practice or you can open this link try to solve the question papers when you are confident that the answer given is wrong the best way is to use these links do not ask chat gpt to justify the answer given in the question paper because the answer given in question paper might be wrong so this is one mistake which people do a lot of time that they will see some answer given in the question paper and they will ask chat gpt how it came and uh, probably all the llms try to justify in some random fashion so not a promoter but make sure you do this thing now coming to the syllabus part so this is important because i think on website you only would see syllabus for 8 weeks but instead we have 11 weeks week 12 is just summary or you can say epilogue what you have studied in all these 11 weeks 
So week one is very easy. It, you know, deals with the basic data visualization. What are the ways where people, you know, try to trick you while making charts. So this week is very easy. Please do it. Quiz one way, you will see one question for sure. Week two is somewhere where we start actually, you know, getting into the things. Uh, we start with guessing the distribution. So maybe they will give you some properties of the distribution that this is being, this is variance, et cetera, et cetera. And you need to guess which distribution it would be. Again, a very important for problem. Then the same thing, but using a statistical test, which test we are going to use. If you have, uh, you know, if you remember in the stats one, stats two of your foundation level or your first year, you would have studied chi-square, z-test, t-test and all. So we would be using something here and there. So this is your chi-square goodness of it, GOF. This test is basically the statistical test to check if the distribution is, you know, being followed or not. And TP plot, QQ plot, so some theory about these things. This is also again used a lot to check if something is, you know, following any particular kind of distribution. Now in week three, you will have chi-square test of independence. So basically to check if two, uh, you know, variables are independent or not. Then you will also have naive bias. Again, a very easy thing which you have studied in your stats too. Again, repetition. Then in week four, you will have demand response curve and some properties of demand response curve, how, you know, demand is proportional to, you know, price and all that stuff. Microeconomics, which you studied in business data management. Then introduction to simple linear regression. Here we will be studying simple linear regression. That means you will be restricted to one input variable. So all these four weeks are important for your quiz one. Most of the questions are coming from week four and week three. Week three say naive base may you can expect one question for sure. Good question. Demand response curve and simple linear regression as well is something where good questions come from. Numerical, which I'm talking of. Goodness of it is something, yes, they ask one good question. Chi-square test of independence is also something very easy to do. Test of independence is easy because uh, it has a tabular format and very easy to calculate because we have access to calculator. But goodness of it is something where people generally struggle because of the degrees of freedom and expected value and all that stuff. So that's your first four weeks. Then we come to week four to eight. Uh, now in week five, you will be doing profit and revenue ma maximization. When you know demand response curve, how can you maximize your profit or revenue? So in this week, you will be using a little bit of derivatives, but that's very easy polynomial derivative. And then you will be uh, dealing with primal dual conversion. So this is one thing we are not uh, studying how to solve a LPP problem and all. We are going to study how to formulate LPP problem. That means you read some statement some comprehension and then you will write the mathematical format for the LPP problem and you will be dealing with only primal to dual conversion. So you are not going to solve any LPP. That is one thing which you should be aware of. No LPP solution. If you are interested in how we solve these linear programming problems, go to machine learning foundation course. I think week seven and eight deal with Lagrangian and KKT. So you can see that thing here. Then coming to week six, we start with, uh, you know, multiple linear regression. That means your input variables will increase. Then adjusted R square. How do we interpret these results? So this is very important. You will see a lot of PYQs related to the interpretation part. They will give you some Excel uh, output dashboard, and then you need to interpret. What is the R square? How do we calculate degree of freedom? What is meaning of this thing? Right? So these type of questions are very common. Then correlation and variation inflation factor. Yes, you will see a lot of numericals from these three weeks. So week five, six, seven, a lot of numericals are going to come. And quiz two is, that is why specifically hard. And even in your end term, these three weeks alone carry somewhere around 40 to 45% weightage. So make sure you study these three weeks, five, six, seven, very hard, very rigorously. You practice every PYQ available. Uh, now coming to week six, now we are going to deal with logistic regression, basically classification problem, how we use logistic regression in the business domains, then the metrics used to measure it, accuracy, uh, recall, precision and confusion matrix. You will definitely see questions based on these things as well. So, you know, they will give you some problem statement. They will ask you to find the confusion matrix. They will also ask you to find precision of class one, class two, uh, maybe in the uh, multi-class logistic regression that is also possible you know recall of let's say class number three so you should be very much well aware of these definition what is accuracy what is recall what is precision i am not talking out of the formula 
I am talking of the definition. So you should be knowing what is precision, what is recall, what is accuracy. Then week eight and nine is basically data envelopment analysis. Again, easy part, not a lot of numericals. You should know what is in the theory. Week 11, 12 is conjoint analysis. So here, uh, there is, I think, a lot more theory than previous week. But uh, numerical wise, I think it's very easy. Some small, small things they generally ask. You won't be asked any full-fledged regression-based problem. So if you have watched the lectures, that is more than enough. But uh, yeah, that's the overline for your business analytics course. And uh, again, emphasizing on the main part, week five, six, seven are the most important. Quiz one syllabus is going to week one to four. Make sure you score so good in your quiz one that your quiz criteria, which is this thing here, this criteria is you know, resolve itself in your quiz one. If you score, you know, 50 in your quiz one, you will definitely, you know, be more than this thing. Even if you score, I think zero in your quiz two, 50 would uh, alone in your quiz one alone pass you for that criteria. So make sure uh, you do very well in quiz one, week one to four. Then for quiz two, week five, six, seven, they are very important. Practice a lot. That's it. And for end term, again, weeks five to six have more weightage last two weeks do carry some weightage they are you know less input more output you don't have very rigorous uh numericals here in the last four weeks it's more of the theoretical and the interpretation so i would definitely encourage uh you know go through the syllabus try to see uh this website you know you will see all the resources and it is free of cost and a lot of people have been using it so i know it a lot and uh yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure you go through the grading document. And if you have access, you know, if you have some freedom, do attend your TA session and live sessions. Whosoever is taking those, do attend, try to do that. And if you cannot, at least before exam, one, two days before, try to watch all the sessions which have happened. So if you are attending quiz one, week one to four live session or TA session, you should have watched. When you are going for week uh, quiz two, all the next four week, TA session, live session, you should watch. And for it end term also, you should also watch all these things. So that's it, you know, for this video. I hope I gave you a general outline. What was your course structure going to be? How you need to practice? What should be your uh, methodology to study this subject, which will, you know, give you some more streamlined productivity. So that's it for this video and best of luck, everyone.